Private members' business notice number three, Canberra's national institutions. I call the honourable member for being. Uh, Deputy President, I move the motion relating to Canberra's national institutions in the terms in, in which it appears on the notice paper. Is there a second there? I'll second a moment. Second it. Deputy Speaker, in March 2018, the Joint Standing Committee on the National Capital and External Territories announced an inquiry into Canberra's national institutions. The inquiry not only held hearings and received submissions, but also provided an opportunity for committee members to participate in site visits to see firsthand the challenges facing the institutions in managing their collections, providing access to them and ensuring they had appropriate staff with skills required in largely expert roles. I was a latecomer to the inquiry, joining the committee halfway through the year, but had the opportunity to talk to archivists, curators, librarians, sound engineers and others, doing their best in their work within and in some cases across institutions. It was obvious how thin the resourcing was and as a result of ongoing funding cuts, the risk it created to these institutions if these issues weren't addressed. The National Gallery of Australia told the committee it was at a crossroads after years of efficiency dividends had a marked effect. Their submission noted, funding reductions have put the core purposes of the NGA at risk, with questions around financial sustainability, caring for the collection and the planning of our loans programs under constant review. The NGA can no longer find more efficiencies. The National Library of Australia's submission said the caps on staff, staff levels created significant challenges. The Australian War Memorial noted the unsustainable impact of the efficiency dividend, and the National Archives noted that the impact of these measures were cumulative. The committee finalised its report early in 2019 and was tabled before the election in April 2019. The report had support across the political spectrum for its conclusions and recommendations. As the Chair, Ben Warden MP, noted, a strong and vibrant collection of national institutions is critically important for the continued success of our democracy and nation. These institutions tell our Australian story and it is essential that we understand that story, learn from it and use it to build confidence and pride for the present and the future. The report made 20 recommendations, including recommendations around the resourcing of the institutions that required urgent attention. These included a reassessment of the average staffing level caps to reduce the skills retention impacts the caps are having and the perverse cost impact of having to rely on inefficient and expensive labour hire arrangements. Adoption of measures to offset the disproportionate impact of the efficiency dividend and understanding the challenge of, to, of digitisation of analogue audiovisual items across the collections by 2025 and the need for a clear and coherent whole of government strategy across institutions to get this done. And the report has just sat there since April 2019, gathering dust without a government response to any of the recommendations. The inaction, particularly around the resourcing of critical skills across the institutions, has already had significant consequences. In June this year, the National Gallery of Australia announced that they could make up to 12% of their staff redundant. In July this year, the National Archives warned that they were preparing to lose large sections of more than 100,000 hours of audiovisual magnetic tape archives because they did not have the resources to digitise the, arch the archive by 2025. And in May this year, the National Library announced that it had removed key Asian countries from its list of collection priorities. It closed its Asian collections rooms and, and cancelled subscriptions to hundreds of Asian periodicals. As James Spiegelman, the former Chief Justice of New South Wales and former NLA Chair put it, this is not a propitious time to proclaim to the world that Australians are not interested in India, Korea, and the, Japan and the nations of mainland Southeast Asia. That, however, is what the library has done by announcing it will stop its systematic collecting of materials about all these nations because financial restraints force the library to prioritise. The blame should be correctly attributed no one said that the library's funding was being cut. Rather, year after year, it was subject to what was called the efficiency dividend. That this could be imposed every year for decades without effect on the delivery of services, as implied in the language used, was and is delusional. At such a point in our nation's story, it's critical that we support those institutions entrusted to tell our story and give us a better understanding of our place in the world. 
Deputy Speaker, the government needs to urgently respond to the report's recommendations before more of our institutions' work is lost or left to wither on the vine.